Hello, uh, this is Kengo Miyazono at Hiroshima University and uh, uh, today I want to make some brief comments on Lisa Bortolotti's new book, The Epistemic Innocence of Irrational Beliefs. Uh, the book is coming out very soon from Oxford University Press. Uh, this book is is wonderful. I, I read the book uh, several times already and I learned a lot uh, from it. Uh, I have so many things to say about, about this book, but uh, since my time is rather limited uh, today, I want to make it short. Uh, so I, I, I will make some some uh, I'll make just three uh, comments. Uh, among many others. Uh, so first uh, comment is about the methodology, uh, how, how to measure epistemic benefit. So the central notion in this book is the notion of epistemic innocence. Uh, and this notion is characterized in terms of three conditions. Epistemic irrationality, epistemic benefit, and no alternative. And my focus uh, in, in my comments today, my focus will be on the second condition, the epistemic benefit, which says that the adoption, maintenance, or reporting of B, the be belief B, by agent A, delivers some significant epistemic benefit to a. So remember, um, so this book is about irrational beliefs. Uh, Bortolotti talks about different kinds of irrational beliefs like confabulated uh, explanation, confabulated memory, delusional beliefs, optimistic beliefs. And uh, these beliefs are irrational, but uh, uh, but the adoption, maintenance, or reporting of these beliefs uh, by an agent uh, can deliver some significant epistemic, epistemic benefit to, to the agent. So that's the idea. Um, the idea, this idea of epistemic benefit uh, uh, is, is on the face of it, it's, it's surprising because the kinds of beliefs Bortolotti talks about are, are obviously irrational beliefs. But those beliefs, although they are irrational, uh, can have some significant epistemic benefit. So that's the that's the idea. I think it's nice to to refer to Fiery Cushman's new BBS paper uh, as the target article called Rationalization is Rational, where Cushman is making similar claims about, about the epistemic benefit of rationalization. And I personally learned a lot from, from going back and forth between Bortolotti's book and Cushman paper. Uh, they share similar, they share some ideas. Uh, there are differences as well. Um, so it's it's nice to go back and forth between them. Anyway, um, Bordolotti discusses potential epistemic benefit of irrational beliefs. But my question is, my, my worry is, aren't they just so stories? So the, the background of this worry is the just so story objection to adaptationist evolutionary biology and psychology. So um, some naive adaptationists in evolutionary biology and psychology uh, tell us some speculative uh, ideas about how some biological or psychological traits can be biologically beneficial, uh, can contribute to fitness. Um, but, you know, these stories are rather speculative and then they are not really based upon evidence. So we, and then we don't know how to test these stories. 
So that was the th that was just a story objections, uh, uh, objection to adaptationist evolutionary biology and the psychology. And my worry here is that when Bortolotti talks about epistemic benefit uh, rather than biological benefit, um, can she go beyond telling some just so stories? And I think that what we need uh, here is empirical evidence for epistemic benefit, the evidence that some of the irrational beliefs do have epistemic benefit. The question then is, um, what does the empirical test of epistemic benefit look like? How can we measure epistemic benefit or epistemic functionality? It is interesting that some of the comments on Cushman's paper make similar points. Uh, about how to uh, how to measure the epistemic benefit, the Cushman argues that rationalization is epistemically beneficial, uh, but the question is how how to measure the epistemic benefit. So I think the the both the, this question of 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 empirical testing of benefit arises uh, for Bortolotti and for Cushman. Um, how can you measure that? Uh, psychological well-being, social reputations, job performances, these factors are not very epistemic. Uh, I mean, like, they, they include some epistemic thing, but they also include some non-epistemic things as well. Maybe you want to look at IQ and reasoning performance, but these factors, uh, if you look at these factors, the idea of epistemic benefit doesn't look very promising because it's not, it doesn't sound plausible that uh, some irrational beliefs can enhance your IQ or enhance your reasoning performance. It doesn't sound plausible. Maybe you want to look at something like academic performance. Maybe academic performance can be a rough measure of epistemic functionality. Uh, Bodolotti actually talks about uh, Robbins and Beer's uh, 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 study, uh, which shows that self-enhancing beliefs do not enhance academic performance. So uh, this, this result does not support Bortolotti's uh, 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 claim. But uh, my, my, I'm not going to talk about this particular study. My point is just that this is maybe the kind of study that we want to look at if we want to test the idea of epistemic benefit. Okay, the second uh, comment, uh, the, the second comment is about the mechanism. The mechanism in which uh, irrational beliefs uh, can be epistemically beneficial. So if you look at Cushman's paper, uh, he has uh, a story, uh, a mechanistic story about how rationalization can be epistemically beneficial. And he appeals to the idea of representational exchange. So that's the process in which one form of representation is translated into another form of representation. And uh, that is, uh, th this process can bring some epistemic benefit according to Cushman. Um, how about Bortolotti? Uh, I, uh, the Bortolotti, roughly speaking, Bortolotti talks about two kinds of factors uh, uh, in the processes in which irrational beliefs can, uh, can bring some epistemic benefit. One is individualistic factors, things like attention, concentration, cognitive resources. And the second is social factors things like socialization, information exchange, and, and feedback. 
So I want to say something. First, I want to say something about individualistic factors, uh, like things like attention, concentration, cognitive resources. So Bodolotti's idea is that some irrational beliefs help a person, an agent, to pay attention or concentrate or spend uh, cognitive resources uh, uh, and then that's 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 epistemically beneficial, and uh, I like this idea. Uh, I I I am interested in this idea, and uh, I think that maybe Bortolotti's ideas here can be cast out in terms of working memory. So maybe working memory is the key factor here. So hypothesis is that irrational beliefs, some of them free up walking memory and that is epistemically beneficial. Um, this idea is consistent with, uh, for example, Bortolotti's idea, uh, Bortolotti's discussion of elaborated delusions in chapter four. Uh, where uh, she appeals to the prediction error kind of account of delusion formation. So the idea is that uh, uh, first uh, you uh, experience, you, you get some abnormal prediction errors, uh, bottom-up prediction errors coming up. And uh, since those uh, uh, prediction errors are abnormal, and irrelevant, uh, you get confused and you 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 get lost and confused. And by adopting some delusional beliefs, you can minimize the 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 bottom up prediction errors uh, at least for a while. And then then you can you can pay attention to some other things. You can concentrate on some other things. So that's that's good. So that's the story. Um, this story uh, can be cast out again in terms of working memory. So the idea is that by adopting some delusional beliefs, uh, you, uh, you, uh, those beliefs, basically those delusional beliefs uh, help you uh, to spend uh, the working memory uh, for some other purposes. Is, um, so that's the idea. And uh, uh, in fact, the walking memory deficit in schizophrenia has been has been studied uh, before, and the walking memory deficit uh, in schizophrenia is already present in the prodromal stage uh, before the onset of delusions. So, uh, and then possibly the walking memory deficit in schizophrenia is due to the abnormal prediction errors. So those abnormal and irrelevant prediction errors consume some walking memory, and because, and because of that, they, they have limited uh, resource of walking memory. So that's the idea. And uh, Bortolotti also talks about anxiety and other negative emotions, and she makes an assumption, her assumption is that anxiety can be epistemically harmful. Uh, so she says when we are not in the grip of anxiety, we are more likely to engage with our surrounding physical and social environment in a way that is conducive to epistemic achievement. Um, why why is that? Why why that's the case exactly? Um, if you look at uh, the uh, relevant empirical literature, uh, many studies suggest that anxiety uh, can be cognitively harmful indeed. And uh, one possible reason of this is that anxiety consumes walking memory. And um, other studies suggest the the correlation between the between anxiety or uh, a tendency uh, 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 toward 
anxiety uh, and negative academic performances and maybe this correlation is mediated by working memory. Um, some, there are some seemingly successful and effective interventions targeting at anxiety and enhancing uh, uh, academic performance. So that's a that's a that's an idea. That's one idea, interesting idea to look at. Okay, so this is the the last comment I have, uh, and then th so this is about about testimony. So um, the second kind of factors Botolotti talks about in this book are things like socialization, uh, information exchange, and feedback. And Bortolotti's assumption here is that socialization, uh, information exchange, and so on, are epistemically beneficial. So if you socialize, if you exchange uh, information, and if you get some feedback from, from other people, then uh, you you will learn something from other people. You get feedback and you learn something from it. So that's the that's the idea. That sounds plausible, uh, but uh, I think uh, I, I I have one worry about about this uh, idea. I. I'm not completely against this this Botorti's story, but uh, my 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 worry is that maybe this process uh, is actually a bit more complicated than than Botolotti, uh, uh, seems to be thinking. So it's not it's not very straightforward. It's not like yes, you you get a feedback, so you learn something from it. Um, because irrational agents, the kind of agents who have the kinds of irrational beliefs Bortolotti talks about in this book, might not take the feedback very seriously. Yes, they they socialize, they they get feedback, but they do not take feedback very seriously. They might think that they know better than other people. They might think that they already know this, so other people must be wrong. Uh, they might think that the other people are not very trustworthy, or they might think that other people are just deceiving them. Um, I want to illustrate my worry by comparing uh, with Flickr's famous uh, famous discussion of testimonial injustice. So, um, what is going on in the cases of testimonial injustice is, according to Flickr, that uh, first you have some prejudice uh, about say females and because of the prejudice you underestimate the competence and the sincerity of female testifiers so the female testifiers are not competent they don't know things or they are not sincere they they are deceptive they are liars and because of this underestimation of competence and sincerity you end up discounting testimony from from female testifiers and then this is basically what Africa calls credibility deficit so that's the that's the mechanism uh, uh, of 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 testimonial injustice um, and my worry is that um, the the kinds of irrational beliefs Bortolotti talks about in this book uh, can play similar roles as the prejudice uh, in this story. 
uh, causing underestimating competence or sincerity of some other people. Um, so the idea is something like this. Um, so if you have grandiose delusion and you think that you have special insight, you get the God's message. Other people don't get these messages. Um, then maybe you underestimate peers' competence because those people don't know, don't know, don't they don't have the insight, they don't receive the message from, from the God. So you end up discounting testimony because uh, if you, you know, you have a special insight, you don't have to learn from those people. So that's the, that's the worry. If you have persecutely delusion, you think that other people are trying to harm you or harass you, then you might underestimate the the sincerity of other people because you know the other people are trying to harm you and harass you uh, so those people will not tell truth uh, to, to you they will try to deceive you um, so again you end up discounting testimony from from other people positive illusion uh, if you have it uh, you think that you have you know better than other people you uh, you are smarter than other people then you tend to overestimate your own competence and underestimate other people's competence and you might end up discounting testimony if you have a confabulated memory then you basically overestimate the accuracy of own memory and uh, and then you underestimate the accuracy of other people's memory maybe conflicting memory and you end up discounting testimony from others uh, again if you have confabulated explanation of your own action then you overestimate the accuracy of own explanation and underestimate you, uh, the accuracy of other people's explanation of what you're doing and you end up discounting testimony so that's the that's the worry uh here um i am not sure whether the the kind of processes i'm talking about the the the, the discounting testimony is actually happening in those cases in the end i think this is really empirical Issues. So I want to I want to go back to the first point about methodology. Um, uh, we need more empirical uh, uh, data studies and then and more uh, discussions uh, 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 to see whether my my worry is really serious or not. I'm not sure at this point, but uh, at least that's the that's the worry I have uh, so far. And uh, with that, I uh, want to finish my, my comment. Uh, again, I want to say uh, I highly, highly recommend uh, this book. I read this uh, book uh, several times already, and then I, I think I will keep coming back, uh, coming back to this book uh, in the future. Uh, and uh, I, I recommend other people to do the same thing. Uh, okay, uh, thank you and uh, goodbye.